we continue our study of depth first search in graphs. You will remember that the problem that we were tackling was that of finding out whether there is a path from a vertex S to a vertex T in a graph G. And in that problem, we first got an initial definition. The initial definition was a recursive one with the base condition saying that if S is equal to T, then you will return true. Otherwise, then for each successor W or each edge VW in the graph, if W to T, if there is a path from W to T, then obviously there is a path from V to T because there is an edge from V to W. So, we recursively searched W to T and uh, if any one of them gave a solution, we stopped and said yes, there is a path. But while implementing it, we saw that there is a problem of identical, there is a problem of falling into an infinite loop due to identical sub problems. Now, there we used our concept of dynamic programming to get out of that uh, issue and we used an array visited which was like the done array of Fibonacci which indicated that that vertex has already been seen or that sub problem has already been solved and if that was solved we did not solve it again. So, by that we obtained the following algorithm. The algorithm was if v is equal to t return 1 and then mark it visited because this is the vertex we have visited. Otherwise that is v is not equal to t. for each edge v w in t here we used the dynamic programming idea. Here prune or do not redo identical sub problems. Now, if w is visited already and there was a path from w to t, then the algorithm would not have come here. It would have stopped whenever we had solved this w earlier. All right. Therefore, uh, we did not take a solution from that. So, if it is not visited only then you would recursively visit it. So, that was the algorithm that we obtained. Now, let us see how useful or what is the efficiency of that algorithm or how we will implement it in a particular data structure. That is, will we use an adjacency list, will we use an adjacency matrix or will we use a um, direct representation, which is the representation that we will use. So, let us take an example. Now, let us take our uh, running example which we had and let us redraw it. Now, in this example, let us see how uh, which of the algorithms which uh, we are going to implement, which of them will be efficient. So, let us see uh, what uh, if we use an adjacency matrix. If v is equal to t is directly checked, visited this is an array, so this will take constant time. For each edge v w in g, this is very crucial, this part. Now, in an adjacency matrix, as you will notice, this is a matrix with v and w. If you want to find out whether the edge v w exists, it is ok. But if you want to find out all the edges in T, all the W's which are connected, you will have to go through all of them. And here in the adjacency matrix representation for this case, you will have to write it out this way. For if there are n such vertices, I 
equal to for j suppose this is i and this is j for j equal to 1 to n do if matrix mat v to j equal to 1 that is what is going to be um, is this is the part and then you will write if visited w or here it will be j is equal to equal to 0 etcetera. So, this part will replace this. Okay. The rest will be identical. So, what is the complexity? Each no, each edge you will come at from this edge once and this edge back once. And once you come here, a node will be visited, will be marked visited only once. Therefore, let us see if I give you 1 to say 4, then you will come from here to here once. From here, okay, let we did not put this edge. from here to here once and once this is marked visited you will not come back from here to here once from here to here once but this is marked visited so you will not continue you will come back then from here to here you will try once and then so for every edge you will try it only once. So, the complexity of this algorithm it visits it marks a vertex visited once marks a vertex to be visited only once and traverses an edge at most twice that is v w once and w v. So, if you put both the edges then an edge is also visited once. Therefore, each edge v w will be checked only once either it is v w or w v. v w will be checked once w v will be checked once and no more because either once the if it is checked once and if it is not visited w will become visited. So, next time you will not require to come across this edge. Now, in an adjacency matrix representation, this will be checked by checking all the elements here. So, if there are n vertices, okay. so let us see what is the complexity of the adjacency matrix representation. If we use an adjacency matrix representation, what is the complexity? visited is marked n. So, that is order n. There are n vertices. On the other hand here for each edge to check all the edges of this you will have to go n time. So, for each edge you will check this, 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 this. So, for each vertex you will check all the edges. So, you will be checking so many rows. For each vertex you will check all the rows. So, the total number of rows is n into n. So, n square comparisons here this comparison will be done n square number of times. So, here this is for visited v equal to 1 and this will be for checking mat v j equal to equal to 1. So, that complexity using the adjacency matrix will be order n square. Now, let us see what will be the complexity using an adjacency list. So, suppose we use an adjacency list. You 
you will recall in an adjacency list for each vertex say 1 it is kept like this 2 3 for 2 this is 1 this is 2 for 2 I will have 1 3 and so on. Therefore, in the algorithm for each edge V w in G, it will just proceed along this link list. So, each edge will be checked only once. So, the vertices visited will be marked here. So, to mark the visited again here will be order n visited v equal to 1. But this check if visited w will be checked for each edge and this each edge will be implemented like this by moving along this. So, unlike in the adjacency matrix where you need to check whether this edge exists or does not exist, here you only need to check on the edges. So, if e are the number of edges then here it will do uh, edges will be checked. So, here this visited w the num if e are the number of edges then this check visited w equal to equal to 0 which comes here this check will be done only order e times. In the matrix adjacency matrix also this check will be done e times, but in the adjacency matrix the check that mat i j is equal to equal to 1 that will be checked order n times. So, in the adjacency matrix this will be e order e times where e is the number of edges you will check visited v, uh, w equal to equal to 0 this or visited j equal to equal to 0 this will be checked e times, but this will be checked n square time, but this does not exist this check is not required in the adjacency list. Therefore, in the adjacency it will be order n and order e and these are exact orders you can easily show. So, this is the complexity now order e the number of edges how many edges can you have in a graph? in a graph of n nodes you can have n square edges. So, in the worst case E is approximately n square is of order n square. So, this will be order n square, but if, if E is less that if E is less then it will still be order E. Therefore, this adjacency list representation is more useful because it checks only the number of edges though in the worst case the number of edges is order n square, but in the better cases it will order E. Therefore, adjacency list representation is more useful than the adjacency matrix representation for solving this problem. Right? Now, take the direct representation. The direct representation will move along the graph just as it is and in the direct representation you can put in that place the concept of visited. So, the direct representation will also traverse which will be just like this and it will traverse every edge only once. So, the direct representation or the adjacency list representation both of them will work out this algorithm to find out whether there exists a edge or vertex in order maximum of n plus e time which is linear because the size of the graph is n plus e. You have to give number of edges plus number of vertices. So, we get using depth first search we get an optimal linear time algorithm to solve the graph connectivity problem. So, we have seen how we approach the problem by a recursive definition and then we did use dynamic programming by marking the node visited and by such a simple idea we were able to prove or we were able to obtain the feature that this algorithm is now an optimal linear time algorithm. This depth first search is useful to solve a number of problems. Let us see the next problem and let us try and see what problems we can solve 
using this sort of depth first search. Now, suppose I come back to a node and the node is visited. Can I say that I have got a cycle? Because suppose from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, I have reached from 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and I have reached back 3 to 1 and 1 is visited. Therefore, obviously this is a cycle. So, does this algorithm that we have written at this point, can we write down if visited this is fine, else that if this visited that if it is already visited, can we say that this uh, we have uh, uh, reached a cycle that is can we just modify the algorithm like this and write down here that is here we write down else print f cycle that is if this is true we do it else we say there, there is a cycle that is we have already reached a node which we visited before that was motivated from this situation but it is not so easy to understand that this is a cycle let us um, go back to our uh, original example and see let us say we start from 1 so, 1 is visited and we start from 1 and we have no terminal vertices, we just continue searching and we because there is no T, therefore, this part, this part is not there. But then will the algorithm terminate? This is not there. In our uh, depth first search, T is not required because if all of them are visited, obviously, we have reached the solution. Now, suppose we start from 1. From 1, we will go to 2. 2 will be visited, but from 2, we will go to 1 and 1 is visited. So, in an undirected graph, we will say there is a cycle when there is an edge. right? So, the solution here that if visited v equal to 0, do search, otherwise print cycle, this will not work. Why? because this is a this is just an edge. Now, in this edge we will uh, we will mark this edge to be also a cycle. So, how do we get out of this issue? That is how do we indicate that an edge if we mark an edge then that is not a cycle. What we can do is we can quickly check up whether the edge 2 1 exists. Now, in order to quickly check up whether the edge 2 1 exists that is from 1 to 2 we have reached and we have found that this is like this. Then what we need to do is we need to check up whether this edge is a is existing or not. If this edge is existing then obviously, this cannot be a cycle. So, if we do that then we modify this part instead of writing printf cycle here we check if edge W. See, this means that from V to W we have reached, but edge V W exists. Now, where, what is this cycle from? This cycle must have been from somewhere. For example, from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, I will get 1, 2, 3 and then here this will be a cycle. So, how do we avoid this issue? We avoid this issue by denoting in the depth first search who is the parent of what. For example, 1 will be the parent of 2. So, parent of 2 is equal to 1. Parent of 3 is equal to 2. So, this way if we mark the parents and we come to a node here which is already visited, we have to check that it is not the parent because if it is the parent then obviously, there is a cycle, there is no cycle, but if it is not the parent then obviously, we can reach a cycle. So, based on this idea we now try and develop the algorithm to ask to solve the query is there a cycle.
So, let us have a look at the algorithm which does is there a cycle. During this algorithm, we also do a numbering on the graph. That is, we start numbering the nodes in a particular way. How do we number? We instead of marking it visited, we give a number to it. That is, we say this is visited first, then this second, then this third, then this fourth. If we did it in this order, the number would be 1, th 2, 3, 4. It depends on the order in which you are going to visit the nodes. So, we make a modification of this depth first search algorithm by incorporating one something called a depth first number. So, we are going to reach our final depth first search algorithm. Include we have already included visited depth first number and we can put instead of marking it 1 or 0, we can put the depth first number in the visited array and we also include the parent. By marking including all these 3, we are now ready to find out whether there is a cycle. So, note the dynamic programming on the concept of remembering something or trying to do data structuring where you remember first you remembered whether you visited it before. Now, you are trying to remember also who is the parent. So, you are trying to keep more data while doing the search. So, data structuring during of the search is as we mentioned we had done some simple examples earlier. Now, we come to some concrete cases where we will require it. The algorithm, let us write it out and develop it slowly, then we will get. The algorithm is called depth first search DFS V. What we do is, we have a depth first number, this is a global array DF num this is incremented initially it was 0. Instead of marking this node visited, now we do not have any goal t. We are only at a node and we are trying to search everything. For each edge, so instead of visited equal to 1 or 0, we put the depth first number. For each edge, v i in g if obviously visited this part remains visited i is equal to equal to 0. We search it, but before we do d f s i that is we are going to do d f s i, but before we do d f s i we will remember that the parent of i is equal to v. So, if it is not visited, we do this, else we come to the cycle detection part. And in the cycle detection part, what do we have? If parent v, that is, that means we have already reached visited. Now, if v, parent of v is not equal to i, that means there is no direct edge like that. If this is true and i was visited before v. Obviously, if i must, if i is visited, then i must have been visited before v. Previously, 1 or 0 was the case. Now, since v is visited already and i is also visited, then i must have been visited before v and visited i less than visited v, then printf cycle between this and this between v and i and you close your brackets. So, this was our cycle detection part. The earlier part here we have just put in a number to indicate which is visited before what. All right. and 
this part remains the same only we have put in the parent concept here and this detects whether there is a cycle. Here just it should not be the parent and visited i is equal to visited is less than visited v. So, let us work it out on an example. So, that is now we have started incorporating our ideas of dynamic programming and incorporated we are now moving more deeply into the problem. Once you move more deeply into the problem you start uh, getting into the groove of graph algorithms. You talk in terms of depth first search only. You forget about that you are using dynamic programming etcetera because once you get used to these ideas these will come naturally. So, let us see what happens when we use this algorithm. Suppose we take One, two, three, four. I am purposely giving some other numbers so that uh, the depth first number. <coughs> so, the visited array will be marked in pink, that is, the visited array number will be marked here. So, visited, this is an array of seven nodes. Initially, all are zero, I am not writing it down. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7. Initially all are 0. D f num is initially 0 and the, there is the parent array. So, let the down part of it be the parent array. There is the parent array which is also 0. All of them are 0. This is vertex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, let us start with vertex 1. D f num will become 1. See what is the first idea? D f num becomes 1, then visit it and then loop inside and go on. So, the algorithm if you have noted down, I think the best thing would be to note down this algorithm by hand and then keep it at your hand and once you keep it with you, you can follow what we are doing. So, first please note down this algorithm. Then, so first d f num is made 1, then visited 1 is made d f num. So, this is made 1. Then for each edge these two v i 2 and 7 start is if visited 2 is 0? Yes, visited 2 is 0. So, you move in and make parent of 2 equal to 1 and call it recursively. So, you have called this. Then here again you go into the loop, you increment d f num to 2, visited this make it 2, come here. Now, this has got this edge and this edge. For this edge, visited i is equal to 0. So, you come to the else part that is in the algorithm here for each edge this visited i is already done it is not 0 because visited 1 is 1. So, you will come here and check whether it is a cycle. Parent of v which is 2 is not equal to i here parent of 2 is 1. So, this condition is falsified therefore, cycle detection will not be done. This is not a cycle. So, you go back into the loop and you forget about this edge. So, let us see how we have forgotten about this edge. Now, once we have forgotten about this edge, we come to 4. This is the other edge. So, we come to vertex number 4 and before you come to vertex number 4, parent of 4 is made 2. Now, here and you recursively go into DFS 4. Once you go into DFS 4, DFS num increases this number becomes 3. Once this number becomes 3, you start doing DFS here. So, you will do 2. This one again this is visited and you will see the parent of 4 is 2. Therefore, this edge cannot detect a cycle. 
So, you will come here. So, you will come to 3. Now, in 3 you will see you will mark 4 to be the parent of 3, you will increment d f num to 4, you will uh, come here mark this visited 4 equal to d f num, search from 3. From 3 there is only 4, but the parent of 3 is 4, therefore cycle cannot be detected here. Now, 3 from 3 there is nowhere else to go, so you will come out, come back to 4, come to 5, 5 is not visited. So, you will mark 4 to be the parent of 5, d f num will become 5, visited 5 will become 5. Here you will check with 4, this is already visited, but parent of 5 is 4, so that this cannot be a cycle. So, you will come back out of the recursion and go back to call of 4. Once you go back to the call of 4, then you have already checked this site, all these 3 are done. So, now you will come here. Now, once you come to 7, 7 is not visited. So, you will mark 4 to be the parent and start searching 7. So, number will be 6, this number will be 6. Now, here you will start searching for 7. For 7, the first child is 1. Now, the first child is 1 is visited. Now, once 1 is visited, you come here. Once you come here, you will be able to see that parent of 7, is it 1? No, it is not 1 and visited 1 is less than visited 7, visited 1 is 1 and visited 7 is 6. So, this is true. Therefore, there is a cycle between 7 and 6. So, there is a cycle between 7 and 1, sorry. So, now you have detected the cycle at this point. So, this is how you see that we are able to detect a cycle at a node. So, using the concepts of dynamic programming, we are slowly moving on to a very important algorithm of depth first search in graphs. In graphs, this concept of depth first searching is very important and the data structures that are maintained, the parent, the visited, the depth first number, etcetera, etcetera are very useful. Now, let us see if this depth first search, can you find out whether, so we have answered two queries. One is whether there is a path from S to V s to t. We have also find out, found out whether there is any cycle. Both we have found out in order n plus e time. I am not working it out in details, but you can find out that we have found it in order n plus e time. Now, let us see what is the concept of a connected graph. A graph is said to be connected if there is a path from every node to every other node. Now, if you apply depth first search here, you will move to every node to every other node, but suppose there was a vertex 8 and 9. You start depth first search from anyone he, anywhere here, you will never come here or you start from anywhere here, you will never come here. So, what will happen is at the end of depth first search, this, if you start from this cluster, you start anywhere from this cluster, after the completion of depth first search, the depth uh, 8 and 9 will have visited equal to 0. And if you start from this cluster, after the completion, you will have for all of them visited will be 0. Therefore, to check whether a graph is connected, all you have to do is to perform depth first search. And once you perform depth first search and then check for all the vertices, if anyone is not yet visited, if anyone is not yet visited, you can say that the graph is not connected. Therefore, we have solved several problems. One is whether a graph has got a cycle whether there is a path, whether there is a connected path. Now, you can try and solve these problems for directed graphs as well. The algorithm will slightly change, but the depth first variation will be similar. The next question is shortest path, shortest length path, how will we solve that problem? So, we have to look at that problem. So, we will look at that problem in the next class, but let us remember that there are other issues which we can solve in graphs. Suppose is marking cities and paths between cities or telephone lines and we would like to ensure that the graph is such that even if one link fails, there is still it is connected between every other node. How will we solve that problem and how will we do that efficiently? We will see the depth first search and other types of search like breadth first search etcetera will be very useful in solving such graph type of problems. 
So, I would suggest that you go deeply into depth first search and try and see these algorithms. And graph, in graphs you have got a number of algorithms to solve where these techniques of dynamic programming, of recursive definition, even of balancing will come into the picture. Techniques of branch and bound will also come into the picture. In fact, when you are trying to solve the shortest path length, shortest length path in a graph, you will see how you use dynamic programming to solve the problem. So today, we will conclude the class by saying that we have tried to see uh, graph algorithms, that is the data structure of graphs can be represented by adjacency matrix or adjacency list or direct representation. And depth first search is a very useful way of answering a number of connectivity, especially path related problems. For edge and node related problems, it is obvious. And here in such problems, the adjacency list representation is often useful. There are other problems where the adjacency matrix representation is also useful. So, this is how we conclude our initial study of graphs. Graphs is a very detailed subject, lot of issues remain in graph algorithms. But our idea was to study how algorithm design and data structures and programming methodology goes hand in hand to solve a number of application areas. And graphs is one area where all these will go on together. So, we do not have the scope or the time to discuss graphs in absolute details. Therefore, we conclude here. I would refer to you to any standard book on algorithm design because the end of this course really moves you more deeply into algorithm design. We have just done a bit of data structuring, deep analysis, algorithm, analysis of algorithms, design of algorithms which have to go hand in hand will come up. So, we conclude our initial discussion on graph algorithms today.